It's hard to learn about tornadoes. Not only do they come and go suddenly, they also move around a lot. So it's been left up to adventurous men and women to check tornadoes out up close and personal, you might say. These folks call themselves storm chasers, and they take to the road to capture valuable scientific information to enhance our knowledge about tornadoes. One such fellow is Tim Marshall. I think it looks pretty good for today. Uh, there's going to be tornadoes today. I just think that uh, we need to get there, and we need to have some luck today to, uh, in order to see them. For Tim Marshall, the chase starts indoors, and he's well prepared. He's a meteorologist with graduate degrees in atmospheric science and civil engineering. And we'll pull up Stephenville to see how thick the low-level moisture is. One month a year, he takes off from his engineering job to pursue the elusive tornado. The search begins at Tim's house north of Dallas. Today, he may go west to the Texas Panhandle, or he might go due north to Oklahoma or Kansas. He figures even with potential storms developing, his chances of seeing a tornado are at best one in ten. Uh, I've got a walkie-talkie, spare walkie-talkie for you. Okay. Because we're going to be on Channel 6. We had a, we had a storm that... Uh, had Tim Marshall's chase partner is Carson Eads. He's a ham radio operator. There are others along on this trip, too, hoping to witness what many fear, nature at its fiercest. All right, we're ready. The National Severe Storm Forecast Center has issued a tornado watch for portions of southern and central Nebraska and portions of central and northern. Right now, the van is a roaming weather service office. Well, by having a laptop computer, we don't have to bother the weather service anymore. What we can do is get information right on our own, anytime, anywhere. Hooks through a cell phone and that's the beauty of a laptop computer and a modem. Receiving data from three states, Tim plots it on a weather map. Now watch all this. There's our weather data. Boom. Right there. Oh, it looks pretty good. Look at the, uh, what's right in here. We have this little punch here coming in here. Looks like we're heading in the right direction. It's looking like the severe weather may extend farther south than they expected. And you see a very sharp boundary in green here, where the dew, the dew points are. That's where the dry line is. That's a boundary between the dry air to the west and the moist air to the east. And that boundary is a focal point for severe thunderstorm formation. And that's what we want to get to. We want to get to that dry line. The bottom line on this is that we need to get our butt west. <laughs> that's it. We need to get out there. But all the computers and cellular phones won't predict exactly where a storm will form, or if a tornado will form at all. We're not ever going to be able to predict exactly where a storm is going to form. We just don't have that capability right now. Five years ago, chasers like Tim Marshall didn't have this technology. They'd follow storms visually. Now their cellular phones and computers may be about to pay off. There's a CB to our north. Near Canadian Texas, they make a decision to go west. Approaching the town of Spearman in the Texas Panhandle, they confront a telltale angle cloud. At the flanking line, that is the feeder band for the thunderstorm, so that's pretty good. Wow. It's still a flat base, so we'll have to keep an eye on it, but it's looking good. It's really looking good there. Look at how cumuliform and how rock hard that anvil is up there. But note the relative cloud movement. The low clouds are moving left to right, the upper cloud is moving from, from west to east, so we have a, a 90 degree turning there. The rotation that we need for a, a tornado or for a severe thunderstorm, it's there. It just has to now wind up and do it. Oh, this is incredible. What an incredible storm. What Tim and his fellow chasers have found is a thunderstorm with all the right elements to make a tornado. All right, let's turn this baby around and get going. Now the chase is really on. That one in 10 chance may be about to pay off. Oh my goodness, look at how big that tornado is. That is a giant tornado. Very large cone-shaped tornado on the ground, churning through the countryside. Darn, just off in the haze. Oh, gee whiz. Come on, get away from it, Rain. Get away from it. Tornado now on the ground. I've got to take some stills here of this. 
Tim and his caravan will chase this tornado northeastward into Oklahoma. It's a powerful twister, fortunately not near a populated area. It's somewhat hard to see because it's picking up so much dust. Extremely large tornado now, very large. We're gonna have to get going, gentlemen, because the contrast is getting just so bad. We're gonna have to drive with the tornado on the ground. We gotta get going, gents. Let me it's not long before another tornado forms. It's not on the ground yet. East winds, very strong. Tornado on the ground. Come down again, coming down again is a small two. Coming down again, tornado. All right, all right, all right. All right, very nice. This storm is moving fast. Taking pictures. Very nice, picturesque tornado up there. No better contrast this time. All right, gentlemen, let's get going. Let's go north. For the chasers, the best part is over. They'll continue looking for tornadoes for several more days. But today's catch is as good as it will get. What you saw today was an extremely rare thing. I mean, I'm at this time and time again, and I'll, go, I'll do 10,000 miles a spring, and if I'm lucky, I see one. So what we saw today was a truly rare event. The reason why you see so many tornado videos is that just about everybody has a video camera. The, the challenge is trying to get yourself there for that few seconds that it's on the ground. Well, we might as well come here and watch a nice sunset. This is a hunt, if you will. And you have to know something about the animal that you're chasing, that you're actually tracking. And so you have to know its movements, you have to know how that animal is behaving, and you have to know what to do in a tight spot. Just in case you ever get into trouble, you have to always have an escape route to get out of the way. Well, the end of a chase, what can I say? Not bad. <laughs> We should point out right now that you should not try to chase the tornado. It is exciting for the chasers, we've shown you that. But you've also seen they have years of training and experience. They know exactly what to do when a tornado appears on the horizon. They have a plan of action. When we come back, Tim Marshall will take us back to 1991 when he chased the storm system that spawned some of the most destructive tornadoes in recent history. Then I'll take you back to 1953 and the worst tornado ever to hit New England. We're going to have an interesting situation forming up here. It's a high risk day. Looks like all the parameters are coming together for a big tornado day. In April of 1991, Tim Marshall was chasing tornadoes in Kansas when he came across a storm system that would spawn a deadly family of tornadoes. Tornado. The first sign that we could see of this tornado forming was from the cloud. This, this formed first from the cloud down. And you can see here that it's a, a funnel that's just dipping on down. And this tornado bends and has all kinds of different shapes on it. Tornado on the ground. Marshall followed this system as it moved across the state. Shoot. And we're driving through Clearwater, Kansas right now and it's dead calm. The air is still, it's very muggy. All right, I see it, I see it. Okay, come on now, punch it, punch it. And then looming out on the horizon, the tornado. There it is. I mean, it's just a low-hanging cloud. Turn a little bit this way. Turn a little bit this way, or. Just a white, low-hanging cloud. But we're keyed in on it. 
watching it click carefully and you'll start to see it uh, extending down a little more now it's kind of kind of uh, elephant trunk look to it this tornado now is moving toward a couple of houses on the road here hey, take some pictures Carson that's good and uh, as it crosses that road uh, one of the roofs of the house blows off oh yeah look at the debris oh it hit it hit it we felt that this tornado was going to die out in a couple of minutes it was thin a ropey tornado. You know, the average tornado only lasts a few minutes. But then I don't know what happened. Something happened in the, in the sky, and I have never been able to explain it yet. Maybe one day we'll know. Is that this storm decides to go crazy? An airman at McConnell Air Force Base, just south of Wichita, caught the tornado on videotape as it tore through a base parking lot. A resident took these pictures of the funnel as it hit the town of Andover. Thirteen people were killed as the tornado ripped through a mobile home park. In all, 20 people would lose their lives. Tim Marshall surveyed the damage. We got there just after the tornado happened. There were houses that were leveled all over. There were people walking around in the days after. What was interesting to me was, if you look closely at this tape uh, and look closely at the foundation, and since this, this is where I've become uh, an engineer here. I've become an engineer. Look at the bottom here. This house was not anchor very well at all. I mean, the, the walls were not anchored at all to the floors. Uh, and uh, so that was easy for the tornado just to sweep it out. And, and look how a roofs just flipped right on over. I mean, a lot of the roofs weren't even tied down to the walls. We make it easy for Mother Nature to do its damage a lot of times when we don't build houses uh, better and uh, make sure things are tied down. Can we get tornadoes here in New England? The answer is yes. And when we come back, we'll talk about the June 9th, 1953 tornado that struck here in New England.